So hello everyone, my name's Arthur. Hi Arthur. Um, so we'll get started with what exactly manipulation of game materials is. And that is when you actually move a card or manipulate where a card is or have knowledge of a card with intent to cheat. So that means if you do it on accident, it's not manipulation of game materials. Uh, the intent to cheat is important. Um, it's not intent to move a card or that sort of thing. You have to actively want to cheat. Some players are not great at being able to shuffle like this, and so you'll get two or three or four stacks of cards that stick together a lot. Also on hot tournament days, you'll sometimes get sticky cards. That will happen. Pile shuffling will split those cards up and kind of let them float through the deck. So pile shuffling is kind of nice. Another good reason for pile shuffling from a player's point of view is, anyone? Counting your deck. Counting to make sure that both you and your opponent's decks are 60 cards. This is very important. So just seeing someone pile shuffling by itself is not a reason for concern. Seeing someone pile shuffling and only pile shuffling is a reason for concern. Uh, are you guys all familiar with the double nickel? I'm going to assume that some of you aren't, but double not, nickel? I've heard of it, but I've never yeah. seen it done. Uh, Flores, Mike Flores covered this in some articles a while back. This may be before some of you were judges. It's very important. Uh, pile shuffling, <laughs> when done in a regular repeatable pattern, is not at all random. Zero percent random you will know the position of every card in the deck. Um, you can manipulate this in lots of ways. For example, I have, it's actually more people than I expected, so I'm not gonna be able to have you all cluster around and see it, but I have a pile of numbered cards. I can show you with these cards, if you pile out like this, I know that this is number one, always, because it came from the top of the deck. A deck of cards numbered one at the top, all the way down to 60. And we pile shuffle into, say, four piles. Pile one, pile two, pile three, pile four. This pile will always have card number one, card number five, card number nine, card number 13, all the way to the top. This one will always have card number two, card number six, card number 10, card number 14. <laughs> This file will always have 3, 7, 11, 15, and so on. Um, if you know where a card is, like say you really need to draw your one sideboard copy of whatever card it is, lay line of sight, and you put it on top of your deck, after the first pile shuffle, you'll know it's right here. You can then know it's on the bottom. After the second pile shuffle, it will end up right here. That will be on top of your deck. Hopefully, from a judge point of view, your opponent will cut, but if they don't, you have stacked your deck and it will appear to an uninformed person that you have shuffled. Um, now, does that work with five piles as well? Oh, yeah, so, so there's, there's actually a lot of... Drop the pen? Yeah, whatever, I'm not going to go for it. Uh, there's actually a lot of things you can do for this. Um, four, four piles, five piles, and eight piles are the ones that tend to be the most worrisome if you were watching as a judge, because these are all numbers that go directly into the size of a deck. Uh, they're easier to manipulate where information goes because you have split stacks of the same size you can put them on top. Four in particular is very dangerous because if you have a fully organized deck, four lightning bolts, four shocks, four whatever, if you do a four pile shuffle, then you'll have a perfectly distributed deck. Every stack of 15 will have one lightning bolt, one mountain, one shock, one whatever. Um, I want to, this is very important, so I want to focus on this. Even if a player knows the position of one card in their deck and has no idea what the other 59 orientation is, and they have intentionally put that card there, that is cheating manipulation of game materials. I put a lightning bolt on top of my deck. Did I actually throw the lightning bolt on top of my deck? Lightning bolt on top of my deck. If I keep it on top of my deck, through some rifle shuffles. I got it there through a pile shuffle. And then towards the end, I mess up and it's, you know, between one and eight cards down. And then I present. That is manipulation of game materials. I know that there's a lightning bolt in my top eight cards. I don't know if it's card three or four or five, but I know that if my opponent doesn't shuffle it, I'm going to draw it within the first couple turns. Uh, this is really hard to catch, really hard to prove. And it kind of relies upon investigation. But I want to stress that 
uh, stacking your deck is not just putting one card in one place and seeing it, or something like that. There are areas that do not initially appear to be manipulation game materials. Uh, the double nickel, which is what I asked about initially, is a specific method of pile shuffling. Um, if you take a deck and you separate all the lands, and all of the spells. And you put the lands on top. I can use the whiteboard for this, can I? Yes, and I hand out results. So, double nickel. You have a deck. 60 cards. This top section here is lands. This bottom section is spells. Sorry for my abyssal handwriting. Say 20 to 24. And the rest. Double nickel is a five pile shuffle and another five pile shuffle. The first time you do it, you'll end up with five piles. And in each of these piles, you will have lands in the first four or five spaces because they will be dealing from the top. So you'll have. Lands. <laughs> and then you'll deal the rest of the spells on top and you'll have. Uh, I'm going to do color coding, but it's not going to happen. Lands, spells on top. The second time you pile shuffle this deck, it will appear random. But what will happen is, since you're dealing a land, 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 spell, 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 and so on, you will result in a 60 card deck wherein in any given seven cards, you will have no more than three and no more than two lands throughout the entire deck, no matter where you cut to. So if you do this and you present your deck to opponent and they don't shuffle, they just cut, you will never get too much land, you will never get too little land. This is a very important thing, and specifically if a player comes up to you and says, my opponent pile shuffled five times and five times and five times again, or mentions the double nickel, um, investigate. Because, yeah, it could be a mistake, but it's also really, really important to make sure it isn't. Um, this brings me to our next point as to what a random deck looks like. So, before we move to that, any questions on piles and that sort of thing? No? Alright. How many lands do you think appear in a row in any given random deck next to each other? Could be any Could be any number. Uh, this is this is a common mistake when doing deck checks and looking to see did my did the players switch in randomized, do they know what's going on? If you see a deck with no two lands next to each other, odds are that they're doing something uh, shady and you need to look further into it. Uh, a random deck does not appear to the casual glance to be random. You'll see duplicates of spells in a row, you'll see three or four or five, six lands in a row. Uh, and you will also see sections that, you know, land, spell, land, 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 spell, 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 and so on. Um, uh, be, be mindful of that, that multiples in a row does not necessarily mean improperly shuffled, it's more likely to mean properly shuffled. Um, so if you can't pile shuffle, what can you do? There's Triple shuffles look like this, which is what I've been doing this entire time up here with my hands. And for the most part, this, if you do it a lot and sufficiently, is a sufficient form of randomization. However, there are things that you can do with this. It's, sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not, but be aware of it. If we have a refugee on the bottom, we can keep the refugee on the bottom by putting the cards only to the top of the deck to shuffle. And it so this appears to be a good shuffle, and appears better if I'm actually like this instead of. <laughs> but the refugee always stays on the bottom of the deck. I can then use that knowledge for you know it's just one card, one sideboard card, like that Leyland thing I said. I can pile shuffle it to the top of the deck, or I can put it in the middle of a deck, or that sort of thing, and that's a really easy way to do it. If you're worried about an opponent seeing a card like that, or a judge watching, you can also do the same thing with the top of the deck, one act of progression. And it's the same sort of thing, you just make sure that the top of the deck doesn't change. Um, a good way to break this up for players who do it unintentionally is, and this will be told to you if you ever actually take a class on how to shuffle, like at a casino. After a certain number of ripples, you take the top small handful of cards and move it to the bottom. And that way the same motion 
generates different randomness in different parts of the deck. If the players aren't doing that, keep an eye on them. Um, the important part for manipulation of game materials here is that they're trying to take advantage of it. A player who does this and then cuts their own deck and then pile shovels afterwards, probably not something you need to worry about. They're <laughs> randomizing their deck, so they're doing multiple ways of doing it. They may have they may have known this was a lightning bolt, but unless you see something that leads you to believe that they're taking advantage of that knowledge, you don't need to pursue it further. Um, this is also same sort of shuffling. When you do that, you can still flip cards to the top if you keep track of where it is. Can you do that again? Sure. So, steering blaze. Right. So you just keep, it is, it is fairly easy to keep track of. This steering blaze is on top here. So when you start shuffling, you trigger this one a couple milliseconds you know, after the other one. So you start here, and then you, then you do that. And this one ends up on top, and you know that the top card is there. Okay. Uh, you can do this with more than one card, two cards, three cards, four cards. It gets exponentially harder the more cards you do it. So if you see somebody doing it with three or four, um, three or four or five cards, then they are less likely to be trying to do it to cheat, because uh, players that are doing it intentionally usually know that they're going to screw something up. Okay, so say I have a deck here that has four lightning bolts. I'm not going to actually grab lightning bolts, I'm going to grab something else that I can find for really quickly. <laughs> four, there we go. So, four burn the impures. It's a good card, I swear. Kills the I'm going to know those are on top of my deck because I've sideboarded them. So as I'm shuffling, I'm going to do my best to make sure they stay on top of the deck. So I'm going to do some riffle shuffles. Probably going to do some side shuffling like that. <laughs> At all times, the brand new tiers are staying on top of the deck. And then, what I'm going to do before I present is I'm going to count to make sure there's 60 cards. It's actually, I guess, 58 now because I keep breaking sleeves, but a lot less than 60. So having done this, I know at all times that the bottom of each given deck is a brand new impure. So when I scoop them up like this, burn the impures are evenly distributed throughout this deck, every 15 cards. If I present like this, and my opponent cuts, I will have a 50% chance of having a burn the impure in my opening hand, no matter where they come to. If I want to keep pile shuffling and such, um, I, if you do two piles like this, and you know burn the impure is on the bottom, you'll see some people do this. You can keep them both on the bottom by doing that, and then now you have two burn the impures on the bottom of this pile. To bring the impure from the that pile. And provided that you have a little bit of practice, four burn the impure from the bottom of your deck. Again, which you can then move to wherever you want if a judge is watching or if you become nervous. Um, for those of you who couldn't see in the back, I'm sorry, it's because it's, I kind of had to do it on the table. Uh, what you may have noticed is that the click click, as I made sure the one cards or two cards got there, is a very, very telltale sign that something shady is going on. Players who just are chatting and just kind of do this and move them together to um, move them together like that, or even, or even players who make stupid mistakes like I did with the slipping or big clumps, probably aren't going to be cheated. A player who is focused on the deck and you hear it's something like one card or two cards and usually a noise with it, it's a good time to start watching them see what they do with their deck.